We've got a quick one today as Robinhood has announced a deal to acquire Bitstamp. We'll talk about that in more detail as well as Ripple's new collaboration and a recent piece from Anthony Scaramucci saying it's time for the SEC to end their war on crypto and he'll detail that some more plus a few channel announcements that are important as we move through the summer but if we haven't met before my name's Frank Cho I'm here to help you live a richer life on this channel we talk about cryptocurrency personal finance and investing if you haven't hit that subscribe button do it now that way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates all right, it's summertime, so a few quick announcements. The rest of the week, I'm going to be traveling, so there probably won't be anything uh, on the channel up until next week. And then throughout the rest of the summer and into the fall, I'll be traveling for work quite a bit. So we're going to have our videos probably later in the evening here, U.S. time. But do still expect the updates to continue to flow. Our timing and everything will just have to uh, be adjusted to account for travel and uh, the additional responsibilities of the travel. So uh, do just keep that in mind as we move forward. But a quick look at the crypto market as we get into it. 2.64 trillion, down about a half percent from yesterday with Bitcoin still hovering around 71,000. XRP still in that 52 to 53 cent range. Not much movement there over the last uh, couple of weeks. Now let's look at Robinhood. Their big announcement that just came out this morning was the acquisition of Bitstamp, $200 million deal. So they're going to be speeding up their push into digital assets with this largest ever deal in the company's history. The 11-year-old trading app, popular among retail traders, has been looking to expand its product offerings to mature into a full-fledged financial services uh, provider. They recently announced their credit card, they have IRAs now, and with this acquisition of Bitstamp, which was founded in 2011 and holds 50 active licenses and registrations globally, this is going to put Robinhood in direct competition with giants like Coinbase and Binance. Uh, Bitstamp will power the growth of Robinhood Crypto and is set to become its first institutional business. Bitstamp's core spot exchange, popular in Europe and Asia, has over 85 tradable assets and includes products like staking and lending. So it'll be interesting to see how this is going to uh, integrate with Robinhood. Robinhood's crypto business was the driving force behind a massive first quarter earnings beat in May. But that same week, it also disclosed that it had received a Wells notice from the U.S. SEC note that uh, signals some possible upcoming enforcement action. So we'll see if the SEC pursues Robinhood further. This acquisition certainly does give Robinhood the opportunity to expand even further into international markets. So I'll keep you up to date on anything exciting from those updates and as it pertains to custody as well that's been one area of weakness from robin hood's crypto offerings and so if they allow custody of assets uh, that could certainly uh, change things so now ripple announces a new collaboration this one is also a recent announcement a strategic partnership with clear junction a global company in cross-border payment solutions for regulated institutions. This aims to provide instant and secure payment coverage in sterling and euros for Ripple's payment customers. Clear Junction will streamline payment coverage by increasing the efficiency of transactions for Ripple's customers, sending payments to the UK and the EU. The partnership also plans to introduce a number of new currencies for Ripple customers later this year. We already have seen a number of announcements with uh, Ripple and Japanese banks and We've seen those corridors uh, in the Philippines, for instance. So Ripple already with a strong presence in Asia, looking to further enhance their presence in Europe. And so this is a really interesting fit for them. Uh, Ripple Europe General Manager Cassie Craddock said, uh, Clear Junction is a perfect fit for Ripple. From the outset, it's been able to support all our use cases, including providing sterling and euro payment coverage for our customers. We're excited to welcome Clear Junction to our network and see this as just the beginning of our relationship. Now, let's take a look at what's happening with the SEC as we move beyond important partnerships in the crypto space. Let's think about the SEC's war on crypto. Whether you decide to invest in Bitcoin or other digital assets, it should be up to you, not the SEC or to Chairman Gensler. The American 
uh, government is badly damaged, writes Anthony Scaramucci. We need public servants who care more about right or wrong, especially when it comes to the crypto industry. I'm not denying that there are reasonable questions about how crypto firms should be regulated. Many policy questions still require legislation to resolve, but our current system is broken. The SEC traditionally does not expose itself and its credibility to an appellate beatdown, but this SEC is different. This SEC and Chair Gensler have an extra regulatory anti-crypto agenda, and they're using their power to obstruct and delay the industry, imposing their own preferences where they can. Gary Gensler may not like Bitcoin, but whether you decide to invest in Bitcoin is up to you, not the SEC. What's going on with Gensler at the SEC is clearly a culture of bad faith against crypto. Take January's approval of spot Bitcoin ETFs, which came only after years of good faith applications from crypto industry participants. The SEC was helpless to explain or defend its decision to reject Pat's past spot Bitcoin ETFs, not a leg to stand on. It was truly an embarrassment. The court then ruled that the SEC position was arbitrary and capricious, and ultimately, Chair Gensler was forced to vote to approve a Bitcoin ETF he had been hell-bent to obstruct. Bitcoin ETFs from firms like BlackRock, Fidelity, and Franklin Templeton provide a safe and easy way for U.S. investors to buy Bitcoin. They easily satisfy the SEC's investor protection standards. They're in the best interest of the investors the SEC has sworn to protect. And three months after their launch, Bitcoin ETFs hold $61 billion in assets. Or take the recent SEC versus debt box fiasco, two SEC lawyers leading an anti-crypto action were forced to resign after a federal judge sanctioned the agency for gross abuse of power. The SEC misled the court to get a temporary restraining order against crypto firm Debtbox. This action was ex parte without any notice to Debtbox. They violated the court's trust. Forced to resign. After that debacle, the SEC should have turned off the lawyer's key cards before they got back to the office, but maybe they were following marching orders. So where do we go from here? This lack of communication between regulators and crypto participants has been going on for years and needs to change, he continues. Many other issues in crypto could be navigated in good faith if regulators simply engaged with the industry. Back in 2021, Coinbase CEO uh, Brian Armstrong found that the SEC was the only government branch unwilling to meet with the firm. Coinbase is a public company, and it is now in litigation with the SEC relating to questions that could have been discussed and resolved in good faith back in 2021. But good faith left the building when Gary Gensler walked in. For example, take now the public spectacle of Gensler in front of Congress in April of 2023, when he evaded the fundamental question of whether crypto's uh, second largest asset, Ethereum, is a security. Documents in the consensus lawsuit against the SEC describe how the agency was pursuing an investigation into the nature of ETH days before Gensler testified. Frustrating. Chair Gensler refused to answer questions regarding the SEC's classification of Ether, said Rep. Patrick McHenry, who we're very familiar with. New court filing showed this was an intentional attempt to misrepresent the commission's position. Ethereum, established in 2015, has a market value of $457 billion at the time this article was written. We should have a public statement from the SEC on this one. And to add to the federal regulatory charade, the CFTC went to court this year claiming Ethereum is a commodity and not a security for the purpose of federal regulation. Do these guys even talk to each other? That's an important question. If the SEC thinks Ethereum's a security, why not just say it? That's an important question. If you're not steeped in crypto, you may struggle to answer it, but regulatory clarity unlocks the potential of the industry. And Gensler does not want that to happen. He has an agenda unrelated to his job as a regulator, and he is backed by Senator Elizabeth Warren, founder of the so-called anti-crypto army, the world's smallest and most unpopular political unit. So why should we care? Here's why. Crypto is a disruptive transition of the kind this country normally leads and dominates. Capital and talent are gravitating to the industry. Crypto orchestrates the deployment of capital to overcome seemingly insurmountable barriers to entry. Look at how the U.S. dollar stablecoin, the digital version of the U.S. dollar, 
with over $140 billion in circulation, is disrupting banking and payments, and incidentally, fostering the globalization of the dollar to the benefit of all Americans. We need a good faith regulator to get in the room with the adults in the crypto industry. We need to move past untethered regulatory obstruction. Goodbye, Gary Gensler. Hello, honest reform. Really good piece. Gensler has certainly been a thorn in the side of the crypto industry and retail investors, the people that, you know, he's supposed to be protecting. But let me know what you think. Will we see Gensler on the way out anytime in the near term, or will he continue to be bolstered by his boosters in D.C.? Certainly there are ways to expedite his exit in key election races where we see John Deaton going up against Elizabeth Warren in the presidential race, in other races across the country where we have anti-crypto candidates that are at risk of losing their jobs. Certainly make your voices heard at the ballot box when November comes. We're getting ever closer as we move throughout the year. I hope you found the information here to be helpful. If you did, drop a like, Yelp's channel a ton, and helps me keep you informed. Hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. Thank you so much for spending some time with me. I do truly appreciate it. Have a fantastic rest of your day, and I will see you in the next one.